its own recording. So the logistic model has the following modeling assumptions built in. The first modeling assumption is that the death rate is, is constant. We'll call it delta sub zero. I know that's a kind of wonky looking delta. The second modeling assumption is that the birth rate is a linear and decreasing in population. And this modeling assumption requires some comment. I mean, where this model assumption comes from ultimately is just looking at animals in the real world. And we see that for a lot of animals in the real world, as the population goes up, the birth rate goes down. And we see that in everything from humans to birds. And there could be a variety of reasons for it. Probably the most obvious reason is that there are limited resources in an environment. So, you know, the, an, an animal population can't just increase in size forever. At some point, the birth rate has to decrease. Otherwise, they'll overflow the bounds of the lake or the forest or whatever. So the assumption that the population being bigger causes the birth rate to be smaller is well attested. You see it everywhere. Why linearity? Well, here's where we get into the sort of balancing act of modeling assumptions. There's no real reason this function should be linear, but linear functions are nice and easy to deal with. If we made this some complicated thing involving logarithms and square roots, we probably wouldn't be able to solve the resulting equation. So the Eternal Balancing Act, it reflects reality, sort of. The birth rate goes down when the population increases. We see that in reality. And on the other hand, it's simple enough that we can probably study the resulting differential equation. So plugging this in to the general population model, gives you this. Traditionally, the logistic model is rewritten a bit. So traditionally, we pull um, some stuff out. We pull the beta one out. We combine some terms. We also move the P to the front. So we're pulling the beta one out, but beta zero and delta zero didn't have P's in, didn't have beta ones in them. So pulling the beta one out gives you a fraction with beta one in the denominator.
And there are a few restrictions on these parameters. Beta one has to be positive. And that's just, I mean, look at this, look at this equation. The purpose of this equation was that as the population gets bigger, the birth rate gets smaller. If beta one were negative, it would have the opposite effect. If beta one were negative, the population getting bigger would make the birth rate bigger. And then the assumption that beta zero minus delta zero is greater than zero. This assumption is because beta zero is as big as the birth rate ever gets. The birth rate starts at beta zero and then decreases. If this equality were not satisfied, the death rate would always be bigger than the birth rate and the animals would just be due. They'd go extinct and there's no point talking about this population model. So beta zero minus delta zero being positive means we have something to talk about. It means that the animal population at least sometimes grows. So we're going to talk about fixed points a lot in this class. There's going to be a period where we're studying systems of differential equations, and it's going to look as if we're not talking about fixed points. And then it's going to turn out that actually the only reason we were studying those linear systems was as a tool to study fixed points. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that it's the main focus of this class. Um, for now, we're going to not put a bunch of formal definitions on the board. We're just going to say that if we look at the animal population, the animal population changes over time. So maybe the population starts here and then it increases or maybe it starts here and then it decreases. As time passes, the animal population changes. Unless, the animal population happens to be zero. If the animal population were zero, of course, it's not changing anymore. The animals went extinct and they stayed extinct. And this is reflected in the model. If the population were zero, dp over dt is zero times some other stuff, which is zero. The derivative is the rate of change. So the model tells us that if the population is zero, it's not changing anymore. And there's one other point. where this occurs.
And that's beta zero minus delta zero over beta one. And again, that's reflected in this differential equation. If this population and this constant were the same, then that subtraction would give you a zero, and the rate of change of the population is zero. Zero times beta one times the population is always zero. So this differential equation tells you there are two values of the population where if you ever reach those values, you just sit there forever. There would always be a zero animals or there would always be beta zero minus delta zero over beta one animals. And this number has a special name. It's called the carrying capacity of the animal population. Does this make sense so far? Then what happens If the population is non-zero, so the animals aren't extinct, but what happens if the population is small? And by small, I'm going to say, again, the population isn't zero, they're not going extinct, but the population is between zero and the carrying capacity. Yeah. Now, if the population is less than the carrying capacity, Let's go back to this differential equation. If the population is less than this carrying capacity, then when we do this subtraction, we get a um, positive number. Then we've got a positive constant times a positive population times a positive number. The derivative is positive. And remember that a derivative is a rate of change. If a derivative is positive, then something's increasing. The population is increasing. Going back to this line, if the animal population is in that region, the derivative is positive and the animal population is growing. It's going to the right. Conversely, What happens if the animal population is large? And by large, I mean bigger than the carrying capacity. Now well, again, going back to this differential equation, if the population is large, this difference 
is now negative. And we've got a positive constant, B1, times a positive population times a negative number. So the derivative is negative. A negative rate of change tells you something's decreasing. So if the population is out here, the population is decreasing. And this tells us in a general way what this modeling assumption means for the animal population. It's telling us that if the population is small, it grows. If the population is large, it shrinks. In fact, it's telling us that the number of animals is always going to be around the carrying capacity. Because if the number of animals were less than the carrying capacity, it would grow to reach it. Whereas if the number of animals was greater than the carrying capacity, it would shrink to reach it. So the logistic model says that an animal population will go to its carrying capacity. And in spite of all of the sort of dubious modeling assumptions we make, you know, why do, in the logistic model, why is the birth rate perfectly linear, it wouldn't be in the real world. But even so, I mean, this is basically what we see of most animal populations. Like, the num do we look at squirrels in Shadron? They don't go extinct. They don't, there aren't billions of them. The animal population doesn't get huge. We just have as many squirrels as this city can sustain, more or less. And that's the carrying pop capacity. Yeah. So even though this model is very rough, it does predict basically what we see in most situations. Now, we can solve the logistic model explicitly. It's not a cakewalk. But let's say for some country, DP, DT equals KP. times 200 minus P. 